All right, guys. So I moved this out here, and um, I'm hoping to maybe get the Yellow Neptune Floor Pro working to where um, I can get it to come up over the network. So this one and this one are hardwired into the same router. So if I just guess what the IP address is on that, I should be able to log into it. Um, and then go and do the access the Linux or Linux access Clipper. So I got that there. I moved some other stuff around, some speakers, put all this stuff over here. I'm gonna address this later. Um, I've got my other computer over here, a couple radios down here, power supply, tuner, uh, my two radios that are using the most. The display for the 710. I get the 920 with the 3000 on top of it, and then the 3000 is going to be set up to be doing FT8 and other stuff. I will not do FT8 on a 7300 or a 710. It's just uh, too, too, too likely to have a problem. Too likely to burn out the finals. Um, there's no way. And in 2019, I had a 7300 and the USB port quit working after four months and so the only thing I ever did with that radio was talk on it run it into an amplifier on my current loop antenna and do FT8 with it and one day I went to do FT8 and the USB port just didn't work so I don't really know what happened yeah uh, but I'm not gonna make the same mistake twice so um, I, I understand that the USB port on these particular radios is not shielded from RF uh, so anyway when I called ICOM they gave me a really hard time they were really rude to me on the phone they okay, talked to me like I was stupid and um, he said based on you know he asked me what I had for an antenna and this and that and um, he said that it's RF damage you got RF into the radio everything that I said was the wrong answer Oh, the, the USB cable you're using wasn't high enough quality. Oh, you, you don't have your radio grounded. Oh, how, well, oh, you do? Oh, how, how is your radio grounded? Oh, no, that's not going to work. You know, no matter what I said, it was, this is wrong, that's wrong, this wrong, and we're not going to cover it. And so I got pretty pissed, and I was like, I'm never buying another damn ICOM again. Um, and I did, I did eventually buy couple of used ones um, but uh, yeah I bought another 7300 because I'd like it I think it's a great radio but I think as long as you know its limitations it should last forever uh, 710 says right in the manual don't transmit for a prolonged amount of time so I'm not gonna use it to do that and I got other radios that I have less money into that I can transmit on that are probably cheaper to repair that I might be able to repair um, and so I don't do a lot of FT8 anyways so I just you know figure well let's just keep it simple so anyway um, I've been kinda trying to do the live stream stuff and do the other stuff so I got some stuff over here and I need to get my mixer somewhere mounted. I think I'm going to put like a little uh, board in the corner right there. The mixer will sit up there and then I can plug in the outlet. And then uh, I'll feed everything out of the mixer um, into the Scarlet because that's just a USB audio interface. I have another Scarlet that it's a 2i2, but I'll have to play around with it. Generally speaking, um, I've been using this old phone over here. It's a, a Motorola. It has a 108 megapixel or whatever, 108 ultra pixel camera. And uh, just wiped it and basically put my Google account on it and just, you know, go through it and stream. And it does cast kind of a bluish color 
to everything, whereas the Samsung is like pretty normal. Um, but I don't really like having my Samsung tied up to do this. This phone does have a crack in the screen. It's very hard to see. Um, let's see here. You can kind of see it right there. It does have a crack. But like seriously, I can't see the crack really. There it is. Um, I don't know what phone this is. Let me see. Motorola Edge. 5G 2021. Interesting. So anyway, um, we've moved some stuff around over here. A little more garbage to attend to. I've moved some stuff over here. I uh, pulled some stuff out of here. I've got another computer over here that's uh, got a dead motherboard in it, basically. Um, I've kind of cleared the corner out. Tomorrow I'm going to cut the outlet in over here. I'll move stuff around. And then um, I'm going to probably put this corner thing back in here. I may change how I do it. Since I have a lot of leftover framing wood and stuff like that, I may actually just build something a little bit more um, suited to that shape. Because I also have this metal frame I was sitting it on. And it's just not like the best design in the world. If I had some more file cabinets, like two more, I'd put them right next to here, put that on top of it, I think it would be good to go. Um, I might even cut that down and change it. Um, you know, I'm not sure yet. So I'm making progress. I can actually walk to the back over here and I uh, got some of the guitar boxes out of here, some other stuff. Um, I also had considered maybe I should put this toolbox in the back corner over there or over next to the other toolbox I haven't decided yet um, but one of the things that I'm striving to do is get rid of things and have less things like there's got to be half a dozen stereos that I have there's this old techniques here I've got this ST90 which I actually use I've got a Denon I've got another Yamaha I've got um, this one I do keep for a reason um, it has Bluetooth. I had another one of these. I had the Elite version of it. They both were donated to Goodwill at like the same time. But except for the other one was kind of scratched up. Anyway, the other one would always... The volume would always turn down on it. When you would turn it on, it would be all the way down and you'd have to turn it back up. It had no memory. Which I found really annoying. Um, so they got some other stuff here. Some extra radio stuff. Tuners. Books. Um... And then, of course, my 6,000 watt, 240 volt, all in one inverter. And then, 24 volt stuff. And uh, the batteries are sitting here. And the camera takes a minute to register. Well, you see, they're both 13.9, so they're balancing. Um, the trick, I think, is with this, like, you. Um, need to keep an eye on them because they they don't always stay balanced and then they'll be balanced later when they're resting you really have to kind of be mindful so anyway I got that mess here and um, that actually seems to be like working pretty well in fact um, quite well but what the problem with like the higher voltage I mean the lower voltage is that like my solar is you know um, putting more current through the wires and things like that and I did have a problem so um, I definitely see the advantage of 48 volt however 48 volt with four batteries would probably drive me nuts because it would probably be pretty hard to balance um, honestly I'm not keeping an eye on these really um, I can't see the other ones but I've got some battery meters that are going on the other two batteries. And right now I see a 26.6 on one battery. But those two are 12 volt batteries and that's 24 volt. 
So we have three batteries, so it's kind of a pain. And then they got some of my other stuff, these batteries here, which were a really, really good deal when they were on Amazon for like 20 bucks. Um, it was running HF radio quite a while. This, rate, this one here was also 20 bucks, but anyway, very good battery for portable. Um, we got the uh, X6100, been using it to do FT8. Uh, so anyway, right now it's just it's late in the morning, I'm trying to get some stuff done. Um, put out a couple of videos before I go to bed and um, avoid people. It's Friday the 13th. <laughs> so we'll catch you guys later. I'm going to put out a Linux video here in a little bit. So we'll talk in a bit.